Now it's time to work on this raised bed where I'm going to put the tomatoes in the ground. What I had done already was gone over a few times with the tiller, several times, to loosen up that crust. I took the shovel and shoveled that out. It wasn't deep enough for what I wanted, so I went back across it again, made a couple more passes so I could get a few more inches down there and shovel that out. And what I'm going to do is go back and fill this in with some peat, some uh, potting soil, some of the black cow compost. That'd be easier than having the wheelbarrow of my horse manure stuff in here. Try to build this up and I'll mix in some of the clay sand stuff right here on the side. Mix it all back in, try to get something good to grow in. What I've done there is added a nice layer of peat on the bottom. Then I come by, put a layer of the black cow compost, and then another layer of the Moisture Max potting mix. Now I'm going to put some lime on it and run the tiller over at one time and then mix in some of this clay right here. That's my first layer right there with the peat, compost, pot and mix, some more of this which is almost like sand right now once it gets broke up and I put some perlite and some biotone in there. I'll tell you about that in a minute but this is looking good. This is going to be alright. I'm going to come back and do the exact same thing on top here and uh, build it on up another four inches or so. Let me show y'all something real quick about the potting mix, what to look for. This was the biotone that I just put on there. It's got the mycorrhizae in there. I usually don't bother with this kind of stuff, but when Lowe's is going out of business, uh, I got it for half price, and I just couldn't resist it. But something to look for when you're getting your pot and mix, look on the back side of it, and look at the uh, nutrient analysis, the NPK, and see what it is. There's a big difference in this stuff. This one right here is miracle Grow. Moisture mix, 21.714, tells you it's loaded with nitrogen, not a whole lot of phosphate in there, but that's better than some I've seen. This one right here is the Stay Greens version of the Moisture Max. It's 14.11.8, so you see it's got uh, less nitrogen and more phosphate than the, uh, than the miracle Grow had. Which is, this is what I'm using for the tomatoes right here. I need the phosphate and the potash. Not so much concerned with trying to get a high nitrogen level in there. But this is the other one right here that I was pretty disappointed in. This is Expert Gardener. This came from where? China Mart. Look at this. It says 713. And 713 ain't diddly squat. That one right there is almost zero phosphates in this thing so that means you got to go back and add some bone meal or something like that. So pay attention when you go and get your pot mixes and stuff like that. Uh, it does make a difference. Some of, there's a big difference in this stuff as far as the nutrient levels and that's going to determine exactly how well your plant grows unless you're uh, used to adding some other things in there to build it up to what you want. I got the size of my bed put in. It ain't exactly perfect. I had to step it down a few times coming down the hill here. But I got it wide enough for the chiller to fit down the middle of it. To make it easy for me to pull the plants up and go back and till, it, till in some more compost and get ready to plant something else. Now I got to finish filling them up and we'll be ready to plant. I'm trying to finish the rest of these beds in here. Got four more right on this end to go with the five on the other end that y'all have already seen with the squash and stuff in it and basically what I did for these I didn't dig it all out put it to the side and then backfill it like I did with that long bed I'm just going to come along in here I've already been through here with the tiller tore it up as best I could and then I just come in and try to dig down in there and turn it all up and get it as deep as I can then fill it in with the rest of my soil mix after I get my soil mixed back up with the pot mix, the peat, a little bit of perlite, my compost from outside, and some of the black cattle that I had left over, uh, the next step is to get my mulch brought in here. And since I haven't built the door behind me yet on this end of the greenhouse, my only access for a wheelbarrow is way on the other end of the first one. So I just built me a little ramp, come in the door, and just trucking all this stuff in here. Gonna spread it out try to make it look like folks again. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Not bad at all. The reason I put that colored mulch down, uh, the color is kind of irrelevant, but to keep the dust down in here, this red clay, when it's wet, 
it's slick, it's sticky, uh, makes a mess. When it's dry, it's bone dry and dusty. So uh, it doesn't stay what I call like in a friendly state very long at all. So the best thing to do is cover it up and put this mulch on it and maybe once or twice a week wet it down and make sure it stays nice and damp. Shouldn't have any problem with dust whatsoever in here. And a couple of notes on the raised beds, that kind of deal. As y'all see, I got uh, treated lumber in here. That's what I chose to go with. It's uh, the chemicals that they put in it these days are not what they used to put in in the past. So I don't think you have the issue of the, the stuff bleeding back into the soil that would be a problem. I see a lot of people with the raised beds made out of uh, treated lumber. They do just fine. You can do it from cedar, uh, redwood if you want to. You can do it. You know, make it like Steve Harpster out there in Las Vegas. He built some boxes in his backyard that look like fine furniture. I mean, just beautiful. But you can use cinder blocks, whatever you want to, to make your beds out of. And you don't even have to go and dig them out like I did. Uh, that's something else. Going back to Donald again, uh, he was talking about putting transplants in the ground. Take your time. Do it right because you're only get, going to get one chance at it. Same thing with these beds. Once I build them, they're here. So I tried to take my time, dig that ground out as best I could, mix everything in, and get it right the first time. And then the plants ought to be ready to grow. But if you wanted to, you could just take some 2x8s, 10s, 12s, whatever, lay them out on the ground, put some landscape fabric in the bottom of it to keep the grass from coming up through, fill it up with your pot and mix, and go plant in it, and that would be just fine. People do that all the time. So it's, it's all in how much time and effort you want to put into it. Either way, uh, as long as it grows something, that's what counts. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.